Hello everyone, so we just had an over there patch change and with that came some pretty interesting buffs to some underutilized cards. We had Shanna, we had Crystal, and we had Forge. And the reason this is coming out so late after the over the air patch launched is because I wanted to try out several different builds. I tried Crystal. I still think she's bad giving the same kind of uh, benefit to the opponent as you're getting. Maybe in a Ronin deck, but that's still very, very inconsistent. She's still the same function in a Hella deck as she was before, just a little bit earlier to curve into her if you need to. We also have the Shanna, which I tried in a couple of different builds. I had it in like a Hidden Shadow King Shanna style build that did some decent reach. It was okay, but it wasn't as, it didn't feel as comfortable as I would like. I tried it in a Dracu Zoo where you dump your hand and then you have the Shanna to really fill up the board. You have your counter cards in your Cosmo and your armor. And that one did okay. I think that one's going to be somewhat viable in certain ranges. But honestly, I lost to an Agatha deck and that hurt my pride so much that I couldn't experiment with it anymore. Um, and then that leaves Forge. I think Forge is going to be great now in anything that wants to just pump a lot of power on the board. So things that use Brood, Mr. Sinister, things that use Dakin. Decks that use Human Torch or Deadpool, I think will get a pretty good benefit out of the Forge now, whereas before it felt kind of clunky. Now I think it can fit in a little bit more comfortably, especially with those cards that typically snowball. And that is what we're gonna be using it in today. I think we got this build right the last time around when an over the air patch launched, when it was buffing the Captain Marvel, the Vision, and the Hulkbuster, and we threw all three of those into a deck along with the Forge. And I think he adds some consistency to this build. So the main idea, the main goal is going to be getting your Kitty Pride as absurdly large as possible. It's very easy to get it between 10 and 15 power by the end of the game, depending on how many of your buff cards you get. And then you're throwing that plus your Taskmaster on the last turn for some really incredible power output while dodging initiative. We also have the Captain Marvel that can act as that roving resource. So if you don't get the Kitty Pride, doing a Captain Marvel into a Hulkbuster huge value. You could do the Captain Marvel into a Hulkbuster into a Forge, then throw your Vision or your Chavez on the board on the last turn, and you get some pretty good reach, even if you don't quite get the Kitty Pride. But for the most part, that is, the Kitty Pride will be your bread and butter. You can still push some sneaky amounts of power otherwise, especially if you get some restrictive locations. If the opponent locks things down with a Storm, you get some incredible reach as a result. And so we're going to be jumping into a couple of games. Thank you guys, as always, for your continued support. If you're currently watching and you're enjoying it, but you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm having a record breaking subscriber month. If we continue at this pace, we'll be 40,000 by the time the month ends. And that would be a huge milestone. So thank you guys for all of the support. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Let's go ahead and jump on in. 22 extra in Baxter building is going to be enough. We probably should have competed for Dream Dimension instead, knowing that this is probably their line. I just don't think they beat another seven. They do not. And so we grab a quick and easy eight. And so that gives us a really big surge early. Let's see if we can finish and uh, hold this one the rest of the way through. So Iceman uh, starting off, we do have Kitty Pride plus Hulkbuster. Um, and so that's going to be really big for us. The only bad thing is if we do anything additional into the Asgard lane, we won't be able to merge on that same turn. I think we have to. I think we have to play into Asgard for now. And uh, maybe we give up that location later on and we do Kitty Pride plus Hulkbuster on four somewhere else. Assume that we're not going to be able to win Asgard. So we have the Kitty Pride. Drawing Forge would be pretty good here. Uh, I'd be I'd be OK drawing Forge. Forge before always felt like he was just a little bit underwhelming. Hopefully the extra plus one gives him a little bit more range in some of those useful, useful decks. The zero into Ebony Maw is going to be a really big uh, Asgard lane. So I'm actually going to do Polaris. We're hoping to pull the Ebony Maw into Fisk Tower and destroy it. Um, from there, maybe Kitty Pride plus Hulkbuster, we give up Asgard. We do have the Taskmaster now, so we don't necessarily need it. All we're really digging for at this point would be Shuri. The armor comes down. So it's a one out of three for Ebony Maw. We get zero. It's big, but not as big as we would like. Oh, ah, well, uh, we drew exactly what we needed. We don't even need uh, the extra reach now. Like they can have Asgard. That's theirs. We can do Kitty Pride. We can do Hulkbuster. Next turn, we can do Kitty Pride and then Shuri somewhere. Um, wherever we think we need the lead and then Taskmaster the Shuri after the fact. And it's going to be a really big Kitty Pride. So Forge, Hulkbuster, all, all operate within just making Kitty Pride absurd in this style of build. They can have Asgard. Honestly, they have the Shuri over there unless they have a vision. That location is theirs. We will give that to them because I think we can compete for the other ones uh, like retroactively. So they have the extra draw from Asgard. 
They haven't done a Sauron though, so they will have a negative effect if it's the ongoing card that they that they drop. So let's go with the Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride, and then I'm actually gonna do both of them here. Kitty Pride and then Shuri. And then we'll do Shuri into like a Taskmaster, and that's gonna be a massive, massive uh, Atlantis lane. Red Skull is big at 28 power. Having that Taskmaster copy the 28 power would be pretty deadly. They've already done zero. They've already done Ebony Maw. I can't see them having very many early game cards. So the Nebula would really be like the best of it. This is going to, ooh. I actually think they win this one. Only potential way would be winning Atlantis, but then I'm also afraid that, I mean, maybe they don't have Taskmaster. They only have one card left in their deck, though. They always have it. All right, we'll do it this way. We're going to go ahead and lose, but, you know, it's a shot nonetheless. So the 33 power, we're not going to be able to match that with ours. And so they uh, they are going to come over the top of us on that one. We'll get you next time, Lorm. All we need is an extra forge early on, and we are good to go. Uh, we do. <laughs> Speaking of the forge, we have Kitty Pride. We have Forge, so I think we're gonna do Kitty Pride, and then we'll do Angela, and then we'll do Forge, um, and that is going to give us a really big reach. Now, the only thing that I don't really like about this deck is that it doesn't really have room for like a Shang Chi. So if the opponent does uh, some absurdly large, big power play. There's not a lot of wiggle room we have to compete against it. Um, I think Angela here is going to be perfect. Although further playing into the into the Angela lane after turn four becomes a little bit problematic. But I guess it's only one turn we have to worry about. So they have Lizard. Uh, I assume they have Enchantress, but we don't have any ongoing cards. So we don't worry about the Enchantress. In We don't necessarily worry about the Enchantress. Okay, so we do get Taskmaster, so it's going to be important to get as big of a Kitty Pride as possible. We can do armor. We have the one extra energy from Tinker's Workshop, but I like the Kitty Pride, especially knowing that we have the Taskmaster line. We're going to focus on getting that as big or as buff as possible. Oh, so the Sauron comes down along with the Ebony Maw. Why? That's so wild. Um, so now they're not going to be able to play into the Bifrost. It's going to move into the Lechagia. They won't be able to play in that location. And we do have our Shuri now. So I do wish we had a uh, Hulkbuster here to make just the, the highest roll possible. Kind of like Captain Marvel. <clears throat> but since we're duplicating it, the extra plus one becomes plus two and then Taskmaster copies it. So this is going to be our focus. The armor and then the Kitty Pride. Um, and then on turn five, I probably, honestly, we probably just play into the Lechugia anyways. They do a zero on turn four and not the Shuri. So this looks like it is going to be all that Shuri wrote. All that she wrote. So Kitty Bride coming back in. She'll be eight. We'll play her one more time. She'll be nine. Not as big as, not as big as you might want, but it's going to be as big as we need for sure. So let's go Kitty Pride one more time. They're going to have a zero, so let's do Shuri over here. I think they do Red Skull in the Bifrost. That's my that's my gut read. And so I think Shuri into Kitty Pride into like a Taskmaster will probably be our line. As long as we can get somewhat close. No way that they do the Red Skull in the right lane. Yeah, that's big. But it's not double powered, so I don't think we have to worry about it there. We're gonna have an 18 power. Sh uh, we're gonna have an 18 power Kitty Pride. Uh, we have the Taskmaster that can be used as well. And honestly, let's do this. Let's do this. This seems like overkill, though. This wins this lane, and then we have the Captain Marvel. It's not 18, but it is a movable source. And so if they double down here, then we should be okay. Uh, I think this is what we're going to do. It's lower power overall, but it's a little bit more flexible as a, as in the process. So the Taskmaster comes down. That is big in the right lane, so our Kitty Pride is not going to win that one. So if we had competed for just two, it would have came down to a point differential. The Captain Marvel gives us that little flex room. All right, next up we have Coach. Uh, put me in Coach. The first location is Subterranea. And so we do have our, we now have our Shuri, our Kitty Pride. We have the Angela. So I am now confident enough to snap. Prior to that, um, prior to that, we didn't have enough to really be confident to snap on. 
but just the Kitty Pride and Shuri are going to be phenomenal, especially with the Angela lane. Um, they have Angela as well, so they could be running a very similar deck to what we are. That'd be uh, that'd be interesting if they are. And so we are going to go ahead and all right, um, let's do Kitty Pride plus armor. Next turn, we do Kitty Pride plus Hulkbuster, I think, over in the right lane. We're hoping to draw into our Taskmaster. That would be phenomenal. Um, they do Spider-Man to pull out the armor, unfortunately, which is fine. Um, we're not going to buff up the Angela with the armor, I don't think. I know there are some strange interactions with it. We do. Yeah, okay. Uh, so since we technically played it there, it buffed it up. The armor is fine. The Kitty Pride honestly would have been fine. And uh, we do now have our Taskmaster, which is just beautiful. They've already used their Spider-Man. So if they're using the like best deck in the game, which is very competent, it's very good, but it can be beaten. It doesn't feel as oppressive as some of the decks we've had in mo the most recent past. Um, so the Kitty Pride, the Hulk Bus are going to be a massive Kitty Pride coming down. And they have the Craven. So we are probably looking at uh, Captain Marvel. Maybe a Juggernaut, maybe maybe even Stegron to a degree could possibly be the play. Being active at like reading through and looking at my Twitter feed, I know that KM Best ran a similar version to the move package, that like really good five card, six card move package, but he ran Wave and Doctor Doom. Is this the one that does that? Uh, if so, then the Kitty Pride, the Shuri are going to be really bad value. And especially doing the Shuri last. We're going to gamble for it. Um, we're going to hope that it's not. Um, but we'll see. Legion is so scary here. My goodness. Please don't die, my kitty pride. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's so dangerous. <laughs> so... We have, we have some decisions to make, you guys. We have some decisions. He moved his Jeff, so I'm thinking probably... Uh... So I'm thinking we would probably have Miles Morales somewhere. We ha we're going to gamble on a 25% chance here. The Kitty Pride, if it, just gets, if it dies, Taskmaster copies nothing um otherwise we could do the kitty pride and vision here if we were confident that they were, they were just going to give this one up and give this one up i'm gonna gamble for it though we're ooh, okay the captain marvel is big could get destroyed and it doesn't uh the rock is big it does get destroyed okay i didn't hear the sound so we are safe i didn't even i didn't even peek watch that one we do come down with the victory that legion was nasty into the danger room get making it a a gamble an rng heavy gamble we do come down with a victory that is a an early four let's go ahead and keep pumping it we have our kitty pride starting off we do also have Iceman. man this is going to be a good kind of curb card hopefully disrupting them and honestly with the new kitty pride only getting plus one every turn it's not always as important to play it every single round I'm going to prioritize doing the Iceman. Maybe we hit their Craven. Maybe we hit their Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, their Legion, and make it an awful value play. That's all we can hope for, honestly. That's all that I can hope for here. So turn four. Um, turn four is going to be Hulkbuster plus Kitty Pride. Probably both into Asgard, I would imagine. And so I'm going to play Armor into the left lane. That way it leaves that space clear in Asgard. Next turn, we're probably looking at like, hopefully a Forge and a Kitty Pride would be phenomenal, especially already having the Taskmaster. Otherwise, we're looking at, I don't know, uh, maybe just Kitty Pride. Maybe we throw, I don't know, probably just Kitty Pride, if I'm being honest. Murder World is kind of scary. If they go, if they go Spider-Man and they grab one of our cards and yank it over here, uh, they could destroy our Kitty Pride, which would be, it would feel awful. We do have a Captain Marvel that can merge with the Hulkbuster, which is going to potentially bring it up to 10. Uh, that can move across the board, which will be pretty good. They have their Jeff in the Angela lane coming up pretty big. They could probably, if they want to, they could probably push to win that lane. Now, we do get Shuri. So, Kitty Pride, Hulkbuster, um, Shuri. As long as they're not running the KM Best Wave version, very confident here. 
very confident with the Taskmaster unless they do something sneaky with a Spider-Man and it makes our two cards stack, which again kind of comes down to luck or RNG. Um, and that's where that new Spider-Man is at some of the times. You can control it to a point, but sometimes it is going to be very heavy on just RNG elements. Now they do draw into their two cards with Asgard. Unfortunately, we, we weren't able to compete there. We have, honestly, I think we have all of the cards that we need. Uh, so Kitty Pride. Throw down Shuri. Next turn will be Kitty Pride uh, plus <laughs> Kitty Pride plus Taskmaster. It's going to be another uh, 40 power last turn play. It's going to be massive. It's really hard to overcome 40 power on the last turn. Like that's in level. What do you grab? It doesn't. It does matter what you grab to a point. Um, you move over into mid with Spider-Man. Shuri is going to reveal there, so we'll have to reverse the order. We'll have to do Kitty Pride in Asgard and then Taskmaster in the left. Um, but luckily for us, this deck doesn't have to have the cards stacked necessarily, so Spider-Man is less disruptive than some other key decks that are common right now. Uh, so Kitty Pride here is big. But it's only 20, so it brings it up to 22. They bring this out, that brings it down to 14. They do 8 plus 2, so it's 10. So they can go up to 24 in this lane. But do they? But do they is the question. Do they do it? We're going to throw in a gamble. We're not going to play for mid. Okay, the Jeff over. Okay, in mid is, it has to be big. Legion is fine in mid. Um, the 10 power in the right lane, Captain Marvel would not be able to move over there to win that one. Taskmaster is going to copy in the left. We read them like a book. She can go right, right into where she's at. She wouldn't be able to win left, wouldn't be able to win right. We are able to hold down the points with a good read. Uh, that could have easily flipped the other direction, but them knowing where that Kitty Pride was likely or should go, they played, they played around it. Thankfully, we played around their play around. All right, and coming into the very last round, we have goodness with the Kitty Pride, the Shuri, the Taskmaster. Let's go ahead and start off with the Iceman once again. Then we'll go into the Kitty Pride, hopefully Forge. Uh, if we see Forge, I mean, I don't know that we've been able to play Forge so far. If we do see Forge, though, uh, Forge is a phenomenal way to just ramp up the Kitty Pride, ramp up a Vision. Um, so Shuri into Vision, into Taskmaster is also big, and it has that kind of roving power level they have a kitty pride of their own interesting it is the like really consistent like move package that we've seen so much of recently let's go angela kitty pride that's going to give us a good one lane we have uh the shri kitty pride taskmaster to pump into another uh, and even if they end up going spider-man i don't think it's going to be enough to save them craven is big uh craven in the left lane they get that down that's one of their big power sources especially with us having potentially a captain marvel them having a captain marvel can do some really big things oh my gosh into the hulk buster is nasty right um let's do kitty pride just by herself one turn and then we're gonna do kitty pride into hulk buster and that is going to copy that big big power into our hand uh then we can continue doing that um uh, actually we don't get hulk buster back we get another kitty pride and so then we could do the Shuri plus that buffed up Kitty Pride. We have our smaller Kitty Prides if we want. Uh, just really big value. Unless Los Diablos base destroys it. Which I guess we could have went ahead and doubled up the Kitty Pride just in case. We don't really need to double it up, I don't think. Cloning Vats does get destroyed. Interesting. All right. We do have the Kitty Pride into, into Hulkbuster. I wish we would have had Forge. Having the Forge curve is really nice. Ooh, if they call out our Hulkbuster play here, they could separate the two. Uh, if so, then I think they probably win this round. Be a very tough call to make. But honestly, the, it's not too far out. It's a little bit of a gamble, but they could make it. They could also do Spider-Man in one of the other lanes and potentially move more cards over. Okay, so they go ahead and ooh, they go ahead and move their Jeff, enabling a Miles next turn, I would imagine. So we have the big Kitty Pride. I guess we had initiative, so it didn't matter. They wouldn't be able to do an efficient Spider-Man. Okay, so the two Kitty Prides, I'm glad they don't have Angela that are just continuing to ramp up, but we have a really big Kitty Pride here going into the Forge. Uh, it's going to be better to do this. Always better to do this, right? 
I like the forge. Uh, I like the forge so much here at being able to pump it up and then double it. But I like this a little bit more. Forge earlier would have been perfect. We didn't have it. That's fine. The Kitty Pride, the Shuri coming down. I think we do go with the double powered Kitty Pride this turn. 22 power is going to be tough to overcome for them. They have the Polaris, which pulls our Iceman. It honestly didn't matter what they ended up pulling. We'd be able to just slam home a lot of a lot of power anyways. They've already moved Jeff, and they didn't do their Miles Morales, which is kind of interesting. All right, let's do this. I don't think they can overcome here. 22 power is so much to overcome in any given lane, so I think unless they get a lucky Spider-Man to make those two cards stack, then I think we're perfectly fine. Spider-Man into the right lane. What is it? Oh, no way. That was the one card that it couldn't hit. What? Uh, actually, no, it's fine. It hit it. It just they we have too much power in the ruins. We have so much power in the ruins now. Oh, my goodness. What are the chance? That's a, OK. It's 33 percent chance. It's, I mean, it's fine. 33 percent chance of it grabbing that actual card, but of them playing it there and all of that. Very well played, coach. That's where we're going to go ahead and end the video. Thank you guys, as always, for being here. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a comment down below. As always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.